Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Welcome to online worship with Bel Air UMC International Congregation. I'm so delighted to be with you this evening. I'm Latia, one of the pastors at Bel Air, and I thank you for your presence with us as we worship the Lord together online this evening. As we prepare our hearts to sing his praises, read the scriptures, and pray, I invite you to just know that God is with us. Trust, have confidence, and have hope that no matter where we are in worship, God is always there, and God is always pleased when we worship him. This is the Easter season, the Easter tide, if you will. We are still celebrating the resurrection, which we always do, whether it's the Easter season or not, but it's a special season in the time of the church, and so we just continue to celebrate Jesus. We celebrate his resurrection, and we celebrate that we are saved by grace because of it. Now, as we begin our time of worship together, sometimes we have a call to worship, but today our call to worship will come from the Apostles' Creed. At schools and um, throughout the world, we often read our, our, our recite our pledges. Well, this is like a pledge for the church. And so today I want you to recite or read along the Apostles' Creed as we offer it as a call to worship. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thanks for reading along just now. Now, let's sing.
is the one who lives in us, the great I am, Yahweh. He who was and is to come is the one who lives in us, the great Jesus said that if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, whatever you need, call on the name of the Lord and God will give you the desires of your heart. Most of all, God desires that we would come to him when we have need, that we would come to him when we are lonesome or afraid or have any need that could ever come to mind. God desires that we would reach out to him, knowing that we can have confidence that he hears us when we call, that he hears our prayers and he answers us. Therefore, let us go to God now in prayer. Risen Lord, you came as a sacrifice for our sin. Give us faith to accept this act of love so that we turn from all human efforts and drink in the atoning righteousness of your death and resurrection, your living water. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Risen Lord, you are the true vine. We are the branches. By your spirit, produce the fruit of love, joy, peace, and patience in us for others to taste and enjoy, to see that you are good, Keep us from hanging on to love for ourselves, but to love one another as we love ourselves, just as you have called us to, just as you have shown us in your life and in your ministry. Prune away all selfishness from us and fill us with your great, wondrous love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Risen Lord, have mercy on your earth and supply its needs. Where people are hungry, give food. Where people are in distress, comfort them. Where people are in trouble, bring order and peace. Turn the whole world to you in faith, repentance and praise, O Lord our God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, focus our love on people we know with various needs, particularly special needs. Heal them who are unwell, comfort those who are grieving, protect those who are suffering and struggling, and Lord God, cover those who have any need, who may be oppressed or suffer evil. Lord God, be in their presence, hear their cries, hear their hearts. Oh God, we trust that you do. We trust that you will. Help us, Lord God, to stand in the gap for these, your children, and help us, Father God, to remember that we stand together among those who suffer. Help us, O oh God, to not look upon those who suffer as, as other, but to remember that we are all brothers and sisters in you, and that just as Christ suffered for us, we suffer together with each other. Lord, we pray all this, seeking your mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We thank you, Lord Jesus, for hearing us and caring for us in all of our needs. Constantly intercede for us before our Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, and open our eyes that we may see him through you. We ask all this in your holy name, for you live and you reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We give you praise forever and amen. Amen. Here are these words from Scripture. We'll be reading from Psalm chapter 22, verses 25 through 31. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down before him. They shall bow down all who go down to the dust, and I, I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, I thank you for joining us in worship this evening. It is such a blessed time to be able to join together online. You know, the pandemic has shaken things up for us, and it's been going on for so long, too long. I miss you so very much, and I can't wait to see you again in worship in person. Now, last week, we had our reintroduction to in-person worship, and we're taking it one step at a time. We had our first contemporary service in person. And today, this, this morning, we had our first traditional service in person. And I know you're wondering, when is it going to be our turn? Well, coming up in the next few weeks, we will be returning in person with the International Congregation. Yay! I'm so excited and so delighted that we will be returning in person soon. We've been taking it one step at a time with our planning process. And so if you would like to volunteer to help us with the planning to get back up and running on Pentecost, to cost Sunday, then I'd love for you to just reach out to me, send me an email, even reach out on Facebook Messenger. I know that that's one of our ways that we stay connected. So however you can, reach out to me and let me know that you would like to get involved with the planning process so that we can have a successful re-entry into in-person worship with the International Congregation. Throughout our time of, of ministry online, the, the members of this church of every segment of our congregation have been faithful in our worship, in our service, in our prayers, and in our giving. And I thank you for that. Your giving is so appreciated. And I just want you to know that you are a blessing to this church, and we really just couldn't do ministry without you. We're continuing to do all of the ministries that we were doing before. Our missions were giving to Together in Hope, and we're continuing to give to the other missions that we've been doing. So please don't don't worry about that. Know that your gifts are in good hands. As we continue to worship today, I want to invite you to continue to give. And you can give three ways here at Bel Air UMC. You can give online at belairumc.org slash give. And you can also give through our, by texting the, the, the word give to the number on the screen. And finally, if you would like to mail a check, please write that check now and mail it to the church. Or you can drop it by the office. We'd love to see you. However you choose to give, know that you are appreciated and that you are a blessing to this church. Let's pray. Oh God, we give you thanks. We give you praise. We offer up our very selves to you, for you have given us so much. You have poured into us, and so because you have poured into us, we pour back into your church, into your kingdom so that we can give to you in whatever ways that we can. We pray, Lord God, that what is given will be planted as seed and good soil, and that we as a church would produce a harvest for your kingdom. Help us, Lord God, to produce good fruit, so that others may eat of it and taste and see that you are good. This we pray in Christ's holy name. Amen. Maker of this heart of mine, 
You know me very well. You understand my deepest part more than I know myself. So when I face the darkness, when I need to find my way, I'll trust in you, shepherd of my heart, keeper of this heart of mine, your patience has no end. You've loved me back into your arms time and time again. So if I'll start to wonder like a lamb that's gone astray, I'll trust in you, shepherd of my heart. You're the beacon of my eyes. You're the sunlight of my days. I can rest within your arms. I can know your loving ways. So let the cold winds blow and let the storms rage all around. I'll trust in you, shepherd of my heart. Giver of this life in me, you're what I'm living for. For all my deepest gratitude, you love me even more. So as I walk through valleys, listening for the Master's call, I'll trust in you, shepherd of my heart. You're the beacon of my nights. You're the sunlight of my days. I can rest within your arms. I can know your loving ways. So as I walk through valleys, listening for the Master's call, I'll trust in you, shepherd of my heart. I'll trust in you, shepherd of my heart. Before we go to the word this morning, let us pray. God, great God, whose name is above all names, who is worthy to be praised, we give you not only our praise, we give you ourselves. We pray, Lord God, that you would find us to be a worthy offering. And I pray, O oh God, that you would just renew in us a right spirit as the word is preached this morning, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. You are our Lord. You are our rock. You are our redeemer. We bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hear now these words from the Gospel of John, chapter 4, verses 5 through 30. And then we're going to jump over to verses 39 through 42. It's a really long passage this evening. So he came to a Samaritan city called Sychar near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son, Joseph. Jacob's well was there and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water and Jesus said to her, give me a drink. 
his disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God, And who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, sir, you have no bucket and the well is too deep. Where do you get this living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well and with his son and his flocks drank from it? At this point, y'all, Jesus knew she wasn't seeing what he was saying, and she was still looking for real material water in her situation. So he needed to make it a little bit more plain. So in verse 13, he says, Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them, they will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give them will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here for water to draw. Still not getting it. And so in verse 16, Jesus said to her, go, call your husband and come back. And the woman answered, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you are right in saying I have no husband, for you have had five husbands And the one who you have now is not your husband. And what you have said is true. The woman said to him, sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshiped on this mountain, but you say that the place where, but they say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You will worship, you you worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is here now, hallelujah, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth, for the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, and when he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished. They were astonished. They were amazed that he was speaking with the woman, but no one says, what do you want? Or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water and jar, and she went back to the city. She said to the people, come, come and see a man who told me everything I've ever done. He can, he cannot be the Messiah, can he? Then they left the city and they were on their way to him. The crowds were. So jumping down to verse 39, many Samaritans from the city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I've ever done is what she had said. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay stay with them. And he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe. For we have heard for ourselves and we know that this is truly, truly the Savior of the world. Glory to God. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So in today's passage, we go with Jesus to meet the woman at the well. Unlike the disciples of Jesus, while she was a Hebrew descent of Hebrew descent, she was not um, a Jew. She was an enemy of the Jews as a Sumerian. She was not a person who had been told all of her life that she was a child of God. She was not a person who was allowed to be in the temple to worship God. She did not know the hymns or the liturgy. She didn't fit in with the people to know who this Jesus was who was preaching to her at the well. So how is it that he impacted her so much? Well, she had faith. 
In spite of her station, she had hope. In spite of her enemies, she was able to see beyond her situation. The woman at the well believed that the Messiah, the Savior, the Christ was coming in amazing grace and would save a wretch like her in spite of what other people thought about her and in spite of her past. A lot of assumptions have been made about this woman based on our understanding of language and our understanding of marriage today. We don't know exactly why she said she had no husband or why Jesus said she had no husband, but she had five husbands because it got kind of confusing because that was two different things there, right? But historically, people have assumed that she was a woman of the night, if you will. But we actually don't know this. We make a lot of assumptions about people that we don't know, don't we? We must remember that life and marriage in the first century was different than it is now. Due to the conditions of the environment in which they lived, the the life expectancy was younger than I am right now. It was about 35 years old. And so it's a chance that this woman had a husband and he died and she married his brother, which was the law, and he died and the other four brothers died. And now she was doing the best she could with what she had. We don't No, it's possible that she was in a marriage with a man who didn't want to be married to her or a man that was married and was forcing her to do things. We don't know. There's always things we don't know. And so we have to be careful about judging other people and learn how to accept them just as Jesus accepted her in this passage. We don't know, but what we can know is that she had faith even in what seems like must have been a terrible situation in her life. Why do I care? Because I, too, have to get out of the habit of making assumptions and getting caught up in what people think about other situations or about other people or even about me. We all have to figure out a way to stop otherizing each other and ourselves. We get wrapped up in judging others based on their presence in church or judging the church based on the doors being physically opened due to the pandemic or not. And just like the Jews, we fail to invest in the people and the situations that we judge. And we have to figure out a way to open our hearts up to God so that we can be changed, so that God can use us and work through us in the ways that God wants to, so that God can give us this living water, just like he offered to the Samaritan woman. We have to pray that God would have mercy on us, have mercy on our souls, because he is a merciful father and he loves us and he so desires to embrace us as his own. So Jesus saw this woman at the well. He didn't just see her as a Samaritan woman and remember that Samaritans were considered enemies of the Jews and that Jesus was a Jew. And so he was supposed to be her enemy. He found her in a place where many people would have turned their backs on her. He treated her like a friend rather than an enemy. Jesus spoke to her with love and compassion rather than with judgment. He offered her eternal hope for her faith. And instead of discouraging her because of her present reality, he welcomed her into something amazing. What we've done, what you've done, what I've done, where we were born, what things that we've experienced, those things do not define us. It does not determine our destiny. It does not determine whether we can cross over into the the pearly gates of heaven. It does not get us in or out of the family of God. Those things are not what matters the most. What we know about this woman at the well is that she was hopeful. She was faithful and she was willing to tell others about her encounter with Jesus. When you have an encounter with Jesus, I think you just have to tell somebody I know I do, maybe because I'm a talker. But when you have an encounter with Jesus, when you experience the transforming love of Christ, you've got to tell somebody, and it is your testimony that can bring others to him. And the beautiful thing about this passage is that it wasn't simply, it was her testimony that got them there. She was the commercial. But when they went and experienced Jesus Christ, they were able to taste and see that he is good. 
because of his resurrecting power, we have the story to, to tell. We have the story of how Jesus died. He rose from the dead. And before ascending to heaven, he walked with his disciples. And though he wasn't offering them living water from a well, he was offering him, them the living water of his very self. And as he offered himself to his disciples, he made more disciples and his disciples were called to make disciples. And because his disciples made disciples and they made disciples and they made disciples and they made disciples, we too are now disciples and we can make disciples of Jesus Christ and offer them the same living water that Christ offers to us each and every day. We truly do get to taste and see that he is good. And it feels good to know that God never turns his back on us. God never forgets us. God never forsakes us. He is with us forevermore. And just like in this passage, the people that we tell, they have a chance to experience the goodness of God that we experience in our lives. Now, does that make everything perfect? Does that mean that every day is going to be raindrops on roses? No, there's still going to be pandemics. There's still going to be tension in the country politically and racially. There's still going to be people suffering. There's still going to be all sorts of things that make us uncomfortable and make us and, and cause suffering. But because we have Christ, because we have that living water, we can be renewed in him. We can survive those things that are, that are, that are seemingly awful. And when we, this life is over, we can go to him knowing that we have been faithful servants and he can say, well done. So today I invite you, brothers and sisters, to always remember to taste and see that living water, to remember that he is good. And when you share that with others, you participate in the kingdom work that God has called us to be a part of in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Lord God, we bless your holy name. And we thank you for your word today. We thank you for your encouragement today. We thank you for your living water that fills us up. We pray, Lord God, that in those places where we feel empty, fill us up. Help us to feel your presence, to know your love, and to share your goodness with others. We thank you, O Lord, that you are doing a good work in us. And we pray, Lord God, that we would be able to do the good work that you have called us to do in the mighty name of Jesus. This we pray, giving you all glory, all praise. Amen. As we come to the Lord's table, trusting that God is with us through communion and in all that we do, I invite you to join me in our prayer of confession. It's actually found in our hymnal, but I know since you're not at church, you may not have a copy. But I would like to share with you that Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, who seek to live in peace with one another. And so we confess our sin before God and together in our worship. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and he rose again, and he assembled with us and carried out his word. That proves God's love for us. So in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you, O God, gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and you made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you. He broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in every place where we worship and praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O oh God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered as we gather virtually online. Pour out your Holy Spirit on the gift of bread and wine and cup wherever we worship. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in a final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with confidence of children of God, I invite you to join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, now is the time for you to break and share your bread and drink from your cup. The body of Christ, it is broken for you. Taste and see that he is good. The blood of Christ is shed for you. Share these words and the bread together. Oh God, we, we give you praise for this sacred time together online. And I pray, Lord God, that you would just consecrate our communion with you. Make us be the body of Christ, that we may continue to do your good work in the kingdom by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. 
Friends, what a joy it's been to worship with you this evening, and I pray that it is well with your soul. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace that passes understanding as we receive his living water and share it with the world. Have a great week. Bye.